Here in Hopetown, there is much work to be done, as ever. And while Hilma has been having to do a lot of that work herself, we may be able to automate some processes. We have a great need for scrap metal to be able to bang it out into pipes. And we may just be able to get some of our folks here to help us out. That will be the plan as Hilma focuses on the more complex tasks. And so it is with that we rejoin Hilma Baron. Kia ora, Legionnaires. Rikon here and welcome back to Cataclysm in a Wood, where we are here with Hilma Baron, who has, I think, some crackling down there and some lard. Yay. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful lard. Now, I have started to try something out here. We've dropped a hacksaw on the ground, some lumps of steel, which we need to be turned to chunks, and then from chunks into scrap metal. I am hoping that we are going to be able to use that hacksaw and one of our other folks to be able to disassemble things that are on the spot. I just realized having the hacksaw there probably isn't a good idea because they might try and break the hacksaw but what I've got is a zone and if we have a look down the bottom here disassembly work so anything that is in that space theoretically should be disassembled so having a look at our team here we have Gerald who currently isn't wielding anything um he is kind of trapped in there by everyone else right now which is not great I think that might work for us maybe the ideal will be for us to just give him a bit of space to be able to move around but we want to try and talk to him see if there's something that he can do and let's talk about your current camp activity he's going to say nothing we can tell him to deconstruct any vehicles in a construction zone disassembly yes that is what we are looking for he says bye let's see here's yep there we go he is bloody doing it okay huh it's working now uh the hacksaw is there i imagine he is still making use of that um we'll just have to check in and see how that goes it says he's wielding the in progress uh steel which we did actually have that let's just talk to him again real quick and just see if that has worked out so we just say what's your current activity currently disassembling carry on lad carry on brilliant right okay so we are going to need many many pipes it is a reality uh we're gonna need just just so many but if we have a look at our steam engine again we can see what else we are going to need going forwards we need to have more springs we need to have more steel drums the mechanical pipes are something that we need to work on honestly copper wire that might be something that we can do now steel planning steel frames there's a there's a lot there's a lot that's got to go into it <laughs> But let's just start off with the copper wire, eh? So we only need 37, and we get about 6 copper wire from doing this. Okay, 36. Okay, so we'll have to go a little bit over. But it's only going to take 4 minutes and 16 seconds for us to do this. No problem. Let's get that done. And I believe we actually have access to more copper as well. We just haven't refined it yet. I just realized we actually have a chunk of steel just hanging out over here. Two. I believe that's from us taking things apart. Well, that's the wire segment of that done. We've got the chains, that's great. The pipes will come in time. I know that the springs are going to take a long while, but the fact that we are batch crafting should help us out. Let's have a look and see exactly what we're going to need for those springs. Three lumps of steel for a single spring. Ooh, that's expensive. So we know that we need to make at least three more. Now we had 20 lumps of steel, 10 of those right now are with Gerald. Uh, we're going to need more steel. That much is certain. You know what? Let's get this out the way. Let's get started. We are approaching the end of the day. Ah, oh, we just lost our light. So we'll finish off. We'll finish off what we started. We're going to turn on those lights there. And we shall continue. Um, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, we'll <laughs> continue on here. And the others, some of them have been assisting, some of them have just been watching. So that's going to be experience for them all the same. Now, I do want to check in on our lad here, Gerald. Okay, 38%. Not fast, but then again, maybe he has been doing it. You know, just, just kind of over time. I think we're just going to have to leave him <laughs> working on that. Uh, let's eat some of the crackling that's here. Actually, you know what? Vegetable pies first. Yeah, there we go, nice and full. We'll come back for the crackling tomorrow because 
they have a longer spoiling time. It would also be worth us having a look at this now, just to see if there's anything else that we can craft, and also to call people back, like Ed. Okay, excellent, more logs, we will take that, and we're gonna make sure that overnight we get someone chopping those logs into planks, because we need them for just our general construction. But let's have a look here. I was clearing out some of the area around here. We might be able to try and make the process of us getting to the river a little bit easier. In saying that though, no matter what, it's going to be a bit of a slog. The thing is, ideally, we will craft the boat actually at the river, which won't be the easiest thing, but I think it's going to be easier than trying to navigate it through all of that. So you know what? Let's stick to the idea of just getting him to clear out things that are close to us. It's going to take him less time to travel. And you know what? Maybe we'll send Arturo back out to do that because Arturo was our lumberjack for the longest time. There you go, lad. And let's see if there's anything else that people can be doing overnight. Now we could go for the, the pipe option up here, but it's not as efficient. We get more out of making them from the scrap metal. Yeah, I, I don't know if there is much else that they could be working on here. It would be great if we could get them making frames and stuff like that for us, but yeah, it's more components that it looks like. Right, well, we will still make use of our team, we're going to send someone out, actually we can send two people out to trap animals. With Sandra, we're going to hold on to you for now, Pony, head on out there, thanks. And it. Now for our main hunter, we're going to want to send out someone that we know is a decent shot, and unfortunately, I, th I think from memory, that's Cheryl, who is currently still crafting. I know that Pony's not a bad shot as well, but no one else here is really really going to be able to help us out all that much? I mean, maybe. Maybe Lysandra. One of the easiest things that we can do to check marksmanship skill is just go to expand base. Lysandra. Okay. Lysandra, we might have a look at giving you some weaponry, other than the blade that you're currently using. Okay, so we've given her the rifle, and there is also something that we want to try and trade with you, which is going to be paper cartridges. We're giving you 20 of those. Let's see. There we go. Looks like a deal, excellent. Okay, and I think she's dropped her blade there. That's perfectly fine. So Lysandra, we will send you on out to hunt large animals. Okay, best of luck to you. And that blade will just get put away for now. Well, I do think that they're going to need light to be able to chop wood or at least get started. Madeline Barry's getting into it there. And Gerald, um, yeah, he's still going. 39% still. Hmm. We're going to turn this off for now and uh, wish him all the best. In the morning, we'll check back in and see how things are looking. Okay, good morning. We actually have quite a few of our team here that we are going to be trying to get to wake up and actually join us today because they were staying inside, safe and sound. Everybody wake up, everybody follow. And it looks like we have woken up pretty early. And also, oh, the fire is still going. Looks like uh, Madeline Barry has decided to go sleep over there. I don't know if she actually got any of that done, but we can leave her to chop that throughout the day. 69%. Okay, so there is a chance that he's not just working on... I don't think he's just working on the one piece right now. I think we're just going to have to leave him working on those, and we'll just have to try and focus on other things as much as we can. Uh, oh, they're still out there. Yes, yeah, so I, I don't know if we actually slept all that long. Oh, and we've got some mushy pears, I guess because they froze, so we'll just eat them now. Reason why I wanted to keep them as they were was because we need to make sure that we get some vitamin intake, other than, you know, just lard. <laughs> Let's get this light turned on, which, you know what, that should allow Madeline to get back to work. Thank you very much, she's getting on with it. And so shall we. So, what is the next step for us? Well, we could have a look at the air filters, or focus on the steel plating, or frames. Let's just have a quick gander at the air filter. Right, right, tin can. Totally doable. Okay, so let's make that thing now. Yep, 40 minutes for us to do. It's going to use one of our chunks. That's okay. We can hear Madeline chopping away at that wood. That's our can. Let's go make ourselves a air filter. 2 minutes and 33 seconds to be able to do that. Excellent. Excellent. 
we have an air filter. The mechanical pumps, they're still a ways off. We need many pipes. But the steel frame and the steel plating, let's have a look what we're going to need. So for the steel frame, it's pretty simple. We just need a lot of steel, 20 lumps of steel for one steel frame. Okay, steel plating is just also lumps of steel, but eight of them. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's so much. Hot damn, okay, okay. I'm trying to figure out in my mind just how much work it is going to take us to uh, achieve the steam engine. Because it is a massive achievement for Hilma to be able to achieve something like that. But it, it is also going to be heavily reliant on us finding a load of hematite. We've been pretty lucky with the craters so far. And no doubt we will be able to get more steel from them. I think what we're going to have to do is hit up both of these craters and determine based upon that just how feasible it's going to be because uh yeah it's it's a considerable amount of work there because the alternative is that we just make some oars we keep our very lightweight boat with our aluminum frames and Hilma just paddles simple as that yes it doesn't give her the kind of power necessary to really be able to go quickly but you can still go pretty quick in a light vehicle on water even if you're just using your hands we could also chuck a sail on there as well for when the wind is in our favor but yeah it's going to be dependent on how much we're actually able to find out there in the world oh everyone else is locked inside right now they can hang out for a little bit longer um you know what Chantel, ramshackle let's just ask you to guard here make sure that everything is going to be safe and Lakendra, we're going to be heading back out into the world again we're going to chuck on our fur gloves we're going to make sure that we got enough food to be able to do this and this time i'm going to make sure that we don't accidentally walk off of any ledges yeah that that's <laughs> that's our amazing plan we've still got those pears that's great we're going to go grab some clean water i'm also going to make sure that we turn well are we going to turn off the light? I think we can get away with leaving the light on. I'm going to risk it. But first of all, clean water. Into our sealed stomach. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, we're not going to bring uh, Ryan along for the ride here. We're just going to go as is. We've got our grappling hook. That's great. We've got our sword. We could look at bringing a rifle as well. But we're planning on, on, you know, trying to avoid engaging enemies. That's not always possible. Not by a long shot. But we're certainly going to try that. Let's put on safe mode. <laughs> With Lakindra, we are going to have a look at traveling all the way on over here. And you know what? Let's do a travel like that. It's going to take us over towards where the spiders were, which still need to be dealt with. Those resources we have gathered up, so I should be able to get rid of that note now. But you know what? I'll, I'll leave it on there. We'll revisit and make sure that I haven't actually missed anything in between. Let's start that travel. And that is our crater. That was very, very fast. Nighttime travel can sometimes be a good thing. In this instance, it was. We've got Lakendra, who is just going to be guarding up here for now. We need to try and find a good spot for us to be able to drop down with our grappling hook. And as we ask to climb down, it asks if we want to use the grappling hook. We say yes. Now I need to make sure, 100% sure, that that is how we are doing it going forwards. We're going to go and grab it right away. Make sure that we just wear it so that we've got it on us. Now we need to find the next spot for us to be able to drop down. Everything on this level here should all be, I think, clay and large rocks for the most part. There doesn't ever really seem to be anything too interesting on this level. But dropping down towards the next. Okay, that spot there seems good as any. We're just going to peek down. Okay, and we're already seeing stuff. That's great. We're going to take everything from this crater. So we'll say climb down. <laughs> we're not going to jump down. We're going to use that grappling hook. Amazing. That is how we want to do it. We'll go and wear it again right away. And I think the best thing for us to do is just get everything together, get it in one area, and then get it off this level. Okay. 
So now all we need to do is just transfer these large rocks away. And there's many of them. That way we've sorted out everything that we have here. There is hematite, that's great. It looks like there is a fair amount of it here. Excellent, that's very, very good. Right. <sighs> okay, we're still hauling. There we go, and now let's stop hauling. Good. We'll leave that stuff there for now, and we'll have a look at climbing down to the next area. That doesn't look like it's connected up, so we're just going to peek down, see what's there. It's just large rocks, so we don't need to worry about going down there. We're just going to check these other spots, make sure that we're not missing out on anything else. And then, with the grappling hook, making sure that we have it on, we are going to climb down to that next level. Okay. Good. Safe. Safe work practices. Right. Okay. That's that. Now we need to get this up to the next level. So, we're going to haul that, we're going to climb, and we're going to climb to the northwest. Yeah, there we go. Okay, get it all on the spot. Actually, I think for us to deploy it, we have to have nothing on there, so we should have just waited. Oh, oh, it's still here. Ah, of course. I forgot. Okay, climb down. Yep, doesn't make a difference. That was 100% climb down. 100% climb down. So the the issue, <laughs> the issue seems to be if we're trying to climb down and we don't have the grappling hook deployed, it's still, it's like it's not using it, even though it is there. So strange, very strange. We are going to take that down, we're going to wear it, and we're going to climb up. Slipping down isn't an issue. Hot oh, damn. So effectively we need to do the same thing here again. We're going to try and climb up to the west. Okay, that's good. Let's see if we can just shift some of the things away, these rocks. Frustrating, but now I know for certain. Okay, everything else, you are coming up with us. And, ah, oh, we slip and fall. But the way that I see it, we are still using the grappling hook in a sense. Even if, uh, even if we're not selecting it. Ah, oh, boy. We're gonna go and shift that splintered wood away, and that is our full haul from this one, which I am very, very happy with. Lakendra, let's get going, huh? Now, I guess we need to make the choice of whether or not we're gonna try and travel back now, which is maybe a good idea. Let's just have some of those pears to begin with. We're pretty hydrated, satisfied now, and frustrated after slipping down. Uh, we could go down to this one, and then bring everything back in one go. The more things that you're hauling, the longer it takes. So, yeah, not sure what we want to do in regard to that. And I am trying to recall whether or not we can fast travel while we are hauling things. Well, you can. The problem is, is that there's always a chance that you're just going to walk through something that you can't haul. Um, so quite often, like young trees and stuff like that, it'll collect the things that you're carrying. We can also see that our weariness is going down a fair amount. We're going to keep safe mode on. I think we are going to try and travel down towards here. I do want to be very careful with this wasp nest, and it looks like we go far enough away from it that I'm happy with that. So we're going to give that a shot. We're going to say yes, travel to this point, and as you can see, it sure does take a while. The sun has risen. Uh, we can see that there are some <laughs> dinos around that are friendly right now. There's some giant wasps as well over towards our east. But we can see the crater now. We're nearly there. Let's stop moving. Jeepers, that was close to the edge. <laughs> okay. All right. We are very wary now. No surprises. No surprises. Um, okay. Stop hauling. Let's have those piers. Okay. It's it's not good though. Oh, it's it's really making us upset with how mushy it is. So maybe let's make ourselves happy with a little bit of crackling, because I'm sure that's nice. We have a little bit of lard. Chihuahua has been spotted. Ignore it. <laughs> and let's drink some of that nice, clean, cold water. Okay, Lakendra, let's ask you to guard. Now we need to get down. Um, let's have a look at the spot here and see what that's going to look like. Peeking down, it does connect up. That's good. That's not a bad spot for us to look at popping down. So we'll say climb down. We will use the grappling hook. Wonderful. And we're going to take that with us. So we know how this goes at this stage. I'm going to make sure there's nothing up here. But we're going to grab everything. We're going to get it out of here. I'm going to be very careful. And once we're done, we'll look at heading back home with this bruised and battered Hilma. Okay, 
All right, we've made it up in one piece and let's see what the hall is looking like. We've got some limestone that we don't need and we've got some regular rocks, even a large rock made it in there. Shock horror, but I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go bring it all together. And then we need to have a look at making our way back. We're extremely weary, so this is going to be a rough trip for us. But again, this is going to determine whether or not this is going to be possible for us because we've kind of exhausted the craters we would have to do a fair amount more exploration there are two that are over that way but they're getting further and further from home and the further we get the more dangerous things get let's avoid that wasp nest we know that making our way up this way is at least a little bit safe if i was to say just try and travel back home it would try and bring us right through the wasp nest so we we, we don't want that let's maybe try that first of all okay we're whole oh yeah let's stop and also i just realized that we um let's go <laughs> let's go grab lakendra come on with yeah there we go much better and you know what we're just gonna do this part here manually <laughs> okay i feel like we've gotten through the worst of it so at this point here we're just going to set that up and see how that goes it looks like we've got shrubs along the way shrubbery yep okay let's say yes to that now because we're going to be going through a forest and there's a goose yes uh oh yes stop moving items hi aggressive goose well, this was bound to happen, wasn't it? We've stopped hauling items. Uh, we're going to activate our scabbard, draw out our sword, and slash at the aggressive goose. You had to do it, didn't you? Yeah, let's just gather things up here again, and I'm pretty sure that I'm going to... Oh boy, another goose? Another goose, really? Oh, is it flying? It might be flying. No, it's the one that's over there. Okay, let's just be wary of it for the moment eat some more of our crackling and we'll make our way over towards the woods yeah we're at the edge of it now so when we go over a young tree like that you can see that we can pass but what we're carrying can't so we can use f2 to help us here but i don't think we want to use the actual auto travel just because it's very easy to lose track of your stuff just <laughs> just like that although we are nearly through it and we're right by where I put the resources mark, so I think, yeah, I am certain we got everything there. So let's just get rid of that note. Very hungry, we're tired now, I'm not surprised, and we've spotted a Pachyrhinosaurus zombie. It's a zombie Ryan. Not our Ryan. Yes, we're gonna stop. Where is it? Um, it's close enough that it's within sight. Oh, only just, only just. It's over by some shrubbery, which must be around here, if we're seeing it. Hmm, okay, that's, uh, it's concerning. That's the first zombie that we've seen kind of near this clearing. Do we want to deal with it? How bad is a Pachyrhinosaurus going to be? Fairly bad. We're not actually in pain at the moment. You know what? I think it would make sense for us to try and deal with this threat now. We're tired, but we're not... Wow, we're extremely weary. Lakendra is good, though. If Lakendra can start the fight, then we can try and finish it. At least that's my plan. What is that down there? It's one of those eggs, isn't it? Yeah, Cockatrice egg. Okay, where has this thing gotten to? Okay, we can see it just down there. Okay, it has seen us now. It is aware of us, it's starting to make its way over towards us. It's slow, so we can take advantage of that. But we are going to need Lakendra to really take the uh, initiative on this one. Is she attacking though? That's the thing. I'm just going to say clear overrides for now. She lies down to sleep. Are you kidding me? Lakendra? No, no, no. Okay, thank you. She sends it reeling backwards with a critical that stunned it, and it's got it heavily bleeding with one hit. I think this thing might have already been injured. Let's see if we can finish it off. Okay. With <laughs> Lakendra and Homer working together, they are able to take down the Paki Rhinosaurus. We're probably just going to smash this to pieces. Rather than try and just dissect it, we're extremely worried, we're tired, we need to get back home. Um, 
What we should do as well is use our scabbard, put the blade away so that our hands are free. Okay, thank you, Lakendra. I'll be sure that you can get some sleep just as soon as we make it back home. Believe me, we need that sleep too. Ah, and night has fallen just as we get back within the vicinity of Hopetown. And hey, Gerald, what's up? We can hear Madeline still chopping away at the wood that is there. And oh boy, do we have many, many things. Okay, chunk of steel. Is that just one chunk of steel? What happened to all the lumps of steel? Are they... We had... Okay. <laughs> there were definitely 10 lumps of steel that we put down here. There might be more than one chunk. Oh, there's 40 chunks. My dude, he did it. Amazing. That has saved us so much time. And that is going to allow us to make so many pipes. I am so proud of you. <laughs> That's so good. Okay, so... Let's have a look what we've got here, see what we're going to be able to store. We should be able to store pretty much everything. Looks like we picked up some sticks at the same time there. Um, it might be worth us trying to cook some of that up. We are tired, but it should only take around about an hour and a half for us to do that. We do have extra hands here as well, which should help. Um, Chantel, Ramshackle, let's get you to assist us, huh? And you know what? We could get the rest of the crew as well. It's going to be good for them to be able to learn these things. So we're just going to try and, I was going to say, leave the door open for them. We'll say everyone follow, thank you. Are you going to be able to follow? Are you asleep right now? I think you are. Are you? Yeah, yeah. We've got, we got some of them moving, yeah? Okay, good. Leave that door open. The, the problem is, is that um, many of our folks close doors behind them. Uh, and that's how the others aren't getting out. We could tell everyone that they're allowed to do it. We'll just leave that door open for now. That's okay. Let's get everyone down here, please. And as we can see, <laughs> there's, there's so many. So, so many. If we have a look at Lump, we are looking for this one here. Okay, and how much can we do? 19 before we run out of, well, we run out of charges way before then on the base camp forge. So let's see if we can get that loaded before we begin. We'll use some of the coal that's there. 2,000, thank you. And we'll go back having a look at that again. Up to 19. Okay, that's three hours. We'd be, we're, I think, yeah one it's because we've got our gloves on and two we are extremely weary some things you can do when you're extremely weary and it's not going to matter that much um it is brisk activity actually hang on no it's only light ah good we can do light activity we can try it and that's looking much better just under two hours to be able to get us 57 lumps of steel that's also going to give us 38 chunks as a byproduct this might be possible Let's use some of the limestone from nearby. We're going to use the coal and we are going to try and get this done before we go to sleep. Okay, and we got there. Took a lot of work, but we did get there. Uh, we're going to have the mushy food, which is not super nice. Have the crackling, have some lard, and we will have some nice clean cold water as well. We are going to go to sleep, uh, but I think what we want now is those chunks of steel. We want them to be turned into pieces of scrap metal. Um, so we need to grab them from where they were, put them back down here again. And it was Gerald that did that for us last time. Gerald, my dude, I would love it if you could do this for us again. So we're gonna say, what's your current activity? Let's get you disassembling some things. And he is going to move over and he's gonna start disassembling all of those chunks of steel into scraps. Once we've got the scraps, will be good. I think we're going to try and leave the light on overnight. There is still wind at night, so I hope that uh, we're going to be able to keep the battery going. Um, I will have a look at the notice board really quick. The one outside though, because we don't want anyone to accidentally end up in the fire. These things can happen. And we'll see, um, <laughs> we'll see what's going on with our trackers. Cheryl's done crafting. Okay, that is good. What do we get from that? Heavy wooden beams so we can get some more wooden panels that way. We're going to get Arturo back from the woods. We're going to get our trappers back. Ed, first of all, who's going to have some little critters for us. And we probably want to get these, you know, seen to right away. Hey, grouse and turkey. Not bad. And I believe that's everyone back. So yet again, we're going to be doing some more cutting of logs and you know what i think we'll start on this side now we'll just let everyone catch back up oh wow yeah <laughs> so many of us 
Artura, you're our man. Now we're definitely going to want some wooden panels made from those wooden beams. We're going to say 10. And that's going to be a Cheryl job. All that meat is going to have to get butchered, but that is something that we can probably look at doing first thing tomorrow morning. As, yep, yeah, all of those remains are frozen. While we're here, let's get some more wooden beams made. Ramshackle, thank you. Oh, we're so close to being able to get the brewery that's in. We just need more water faucets. And we need many pipes for the racks. And some salt water tanks wouldn't go amiss. Maybe we'll be making some water faucets. I'm trying to split our attention between this and the big project. For now though, we've earned ourselves some sleep. Oh, and it is light out this morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, let's maybe not start off with the lard. Also, we do have some buckwheat out here, don't we? That can totally get processed into flour. Let's see how everyone is doing in here. Um, okay, did we finish the job? Maybe. Maybe, hard to tell. Where's all that scrap steel at, huh? Well, there's only a little bit of scrap metal there. Gerald, oh, you uh, you were asleep, huh? Okay, fair. Let's have a look at your current activity. Not doing much. Uh, can you continue disassembling all that steel that was in that main area? Oh, he probably has a construction or a craft for it, right? It'll be in progress somewhere. That's where that's where all the steel is. That is that's my assumption that I'm going off at the moment. So we're just going to search for in progress. Oh, we still got the vehicle controls in progress. Yeah, we do need to finish that off. Disassembly of lumps of steel. Yes. Okay, so that's what we want to get worked on. So we'll move it back down here for now. Or rather over there. And we'll see if we can get you to continue working on that. We'll just try and give you a bit of a chance to make it there before others do. There we go. And you're working on it. Fantastic. So I think we've still got a fair amount of planks here. That's good. A really healthy amount of planks. We are very hungry, but I think we're going to start our day off climbing out the window and heading on over to start to butcher some of those bodies. We'll just check and see if everyone else is busy. That's good. Okay. Now we could get someone else doing this, which I'm not against, but we'd need to leave the tools out for it. Which, no, no, we're going to keep it on us. Butcher everything, we will say. And a full butchery. Two hours to get it all done. Okay, so looks like we managed to get a lot out of that. And a lot of it is frozen. That's good. It's not going to go anywhere. Even the offal. Lots of scraps of meat, really. But we do have some pelts. Okay, let's see if we can get some of that turned into food for us. So, meat jerky, cooked meat... And we can make ourselves some lard. We can also make some meat pies. Let's get that lard processed first of all. Four. And Pony, we'll get you cooking that. Let's get these meat pies on the go. Ask for ten. And Madeline Barry. Get some veggie pies going as well. We've got the wild herbs to do it. Only two, but that's fine. We'll get Lysandra Miz working on that. And I think that's everyone that can be cooking right now. After looking at that, yeah. So, okay. We could have a look at making some faucets, among other things. I think we'll probably still send people out to go and hunt, especially the large animals, so Lysandra will get you doing that. And small, let's get Ed and Elizabeth to go out. They'll improve their trapping skill. There we are, we still got some hands free. We've got some veggie pies in here. Oh wow, we've got a lot of meat pies as well. <laughs> yeah, okay, we're doing, we're doing better on food at the moment now. And while these are quite fresh, they will spoil in a few days' time. We probably actually want to take them out of here, believe it or not, because it's cold enough that it's going to be freezing. Uh, the root cellar won't freeze. So I think all the things that we actually have in there right now, we're going to want to transfer out. Yeah, <laughs> believe it or not. And let's just make sure that we keep some of those pies on us. We'll take 10 meat pies. Oh, is that 81%? Good work, dude. Okay, let's have a look at these faucets and see exactly what we're going to need. Oh yeah, pipes and pipe fittings. So just in general, we're going to need so many pipes and that's where the scrap metal comes in. So let's try and work on something else for a change. Hey, we could make that steel frame, right? We certainly can. That's going to use a chunk of our lumps, not a chunk of our chunks. <laughs> Well, it could, but in this case, it's using the lumps. It's only going to take us 45 minutes to be able to make this. Let's use the forge that is nearby. And very quickly, we've got ourselves a nice big steel frame. Cool. So, that is one part of that. Now, there are the drums. 
and the, well, the plating. We've already got two large steel drums, which are kind of used as part of this area here, but we, do we really need to hold on to them? I mean, it is for kind of quenching, so we might need to add them back in down the line, but we'd only need to make one steel drum. 100 liters, right? Okay, so there's a few different options for how we can do this. We have a fair few of these metal plates, these metal sheets, rather, hanging around. This takes us so much less time, and it's just, in general, a lot easier for us to do. So let's have a look at doing that. We'll keep the small metal plates as they are. We'll just use the big sheets for now. And there we are. Oh, and I think, I think Gerald is done. Are you done, son? Yep, there's, well, apparently there's chunks of steel down there. Um, did you finish working on the chunks and give us scrap? Well, there's ch there's 20 chunks there. Do we have some scrap somewhere? Not yet we don't. Interesting. I mean, he wouldn't have just dropped it somewhere, right? We'll search for in progress again. That's weird. Ah, uh, he could be holding onto them, maybe? Let's see, Gerald. Let's trade items. Oh, oh, okay. You're holding onto it right now. And that's only, hmm. So I think, I think he must have just started disassembling a lump of steel again. Maybe I misread that. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna need that back, buddy. So I wanna trade you for that. Thank you. And uh, we're gonna put that back down there and then we're gonna ask you very kindly to work on that. Okay, look at you go. Disassembly of chunk of steel, yes. More than just one chunk, there were many chunks. <laughs> I will not be cheated out of this. All right, let's drink all of that. Right, now, where were we? We've got our steel drums, although it's saying, hey, you are actually using some of these, so maybe we do want to make the new ones as well. We should have done it as a batch. I was being greedy. And we totally can do this with the metal sheets that we've got. So we'll say, make two more. There's another two hours to do it. Ah, we're gonna have to add some more charges, huh? Let's do that first. 2,000, there we are. And let's get that made. Sheet metal. Ah, we messed up. We destroyed some welding rods. That's fine, we've got a lot of rods still. And the arc welder has run out of charge. Damn. Let's just make sure that we turn that off. I forgot that we had that turned on. Now, the... The welder. I think there's a chance that we can make a modification for it. Something that is specific to Innerwood. If we search for mod, Battery compartment mod. Yeah, that is an Innerwood specific one. A battery compartment mod that allows using vehicle batteries and small storage batteries in regular tools. That sounds nice. We would need to charge up our soldering iron though, which currently doesn't have charge. And we'd need an extra power converter to be able to do it. We can get a power converter put together. It's just a bit of a process. So yeah, we are going to need more welder charge. Let's remove our current medium dry battery from that. And we should be able to disassemble it. I think the fastest and simplest method is just gonna be remaking that battery. Disassemble, there we go. So of course, we know that there are a few things that we need for this. The acidic electrolyte paste, the carbon electrode rods, and some duct tape, which we are yet to make some more of. Hydrochloric acid is needed once again which we get from salt and sulfuric acid. Okay, well, we, we do have everything we need for the sulfuric acid. We just need to get a fire going. Off the fire with you. Okay, no one step on the fire, please. There we go. Sulfuric acid, and then we're going to need a sprinkle of salt. So we'll be taking that from there. And hydrochloric acid. We got the salt, we got everything we need. Bam, done. On to the paste. Thankfully, the other resources that we've been gathering from the craters really does help us with this process. So we have all the electrolyte paste that we're going to need. Next is the rods. And for that, it looks like we're just going to need paper. And surprisingly enough, we don't have any paper nearby. But paper is very easy for us to make. We also should have sheet metal nearby. And wooden panels. I guess we did use all of the sheet metal? We've got wooden panels down here though, so we'll just drag one of those up. You know what, we're just going to grab one of our pots that we have, and we're going to get that filled up with water at the well. First time using it, I think. Let's go pour that into the clay pot. Done. Okay, paper. Two hours, two minutes, damn it. <laughs> okay, we're feeling hungry. 
and it's spinning outside, a light autumn drizzle. And that's everything we need to make one of the rods, except we need four of them. And we don't have quite enough, oh, it's clean water that we need. All right, let's make a little bit more clean water then. And that's our clean water, pour it into there. You finished, or you stopped. Why did we stop? Oh, he's having, okay. <laughs> he's having visions of a kind, it seems. All right, that's fine. <laughs> Might not have been the best choice at the time. You know what, Lacey? Lacey, let's let's ask you to give this a shot. Ah, I don't think you're going to want to because you've got a club in your hand. Well, we'll just ask Gerald again nicely. Ah, thank you. There we go. Four rods. And that is that. It's battery time. Oh, no, it's, it's not quite. <laughs> we need duct tape. But thankfully, we can make some. And this is going to give us 200. That's our duct tape. And that is our medium dry battery. And with that, we can now reload our makeshift arc welder. We can get our light back on and we can <laughs> attempt to finish our craft. And there we go. We have those big steel drums. We'll drop that other 100 liter steel drum. We've got 300 liters worth of drums now. The steam engine's quite big. <laughs> <laughs> I might have overestimated how large of a project this was going to be. But hey, we have made it further, much, much further. And now we we're, we're really just have the steel plating, the mechanical pumps, and those additional pipes to go. We're going to need a ridiculous amount of pipes. We know that already. The eight steel plating. Is that something that we could start tonight? Ooh, nine hours. Okay. I mean, we have enough steel to be able to do it. It will take a full day for us to work on. But you know what? After tonight, Gerald should be done with those chunks of steel. And I would hope that we're going to get the scrap that we've been promised. I mean, we, we had a lot of chunks there. But that we're going to have to find out in the next episode. I do realize that these are very craft heavy episodes. But we did have a little bit of exploration sprinkled in today. We are much, much closer now. And I might be overly optimistic, but I think we can get there in the next episode. We might just come up short on resources, which would require us to head back out into the world again. So we will see. For now though, if you enjoyed today's episode, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. As for now, I have been Michael. You have all been awesome. And until next time, Stay tuned.